Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, how do we know that the process of evolution actually happens? So what are the evidences that evolution had happened in the past? So what do we actually have in our hand as evidences? So let us talk about the evidences of evolution. Now when I talk about the evidences, so when I talk about the evidences of evolution, let us quickly look at what do I actually mean. The following evolutionary relationships we find all organisms have come from a common ancestor. So this is where we actually see that all different types of organisms have come from a common ancestor. How do we know that? Because it is very strange to believe, right? Because the variety of organisms which we see on this earth, it is like they are completely different from each other. So it becomes very difficult to accept this truth that they have all come from a similar kind of organism. Now what is said is that the more common characteristics they share, the more closely they are related. So this is something that will actually make sense to you. The more similar two people look, the more close their relations are. Okay, let me give you an example which will help you to understand this. Let us suppose there is this couple. This couple give birth to two kids. So these two kids are brothers and they look quite similar to each other. It is not that they look exactly similar to each other because they are not twins. But they have many similarities. Like here you can see they have got some dissimilarities. One of them is fair, the other one is little dusky. One of them have black hair, the other one has a brown hair. But their features are quite similar. So we can make out that okay, they are brothers. So that, that might be true for all of us. We would have seen that we are we look we have similarities with our siblings, right? Now these brothers they get married. Now they gave birth to kids. So this guy gave birth to a daughter. This guy gave birth to a son. So now when you see this, this kid, he has inherited some properties from father, some properties from mother. So you see he has got curly hair which is similar to his mother. Similarly, this girl got some characteristics of father, some characteristics of mother. So now if you compare this guy and this girl, do you think that they look exactly similar? No, right? They have got more differences than these two brothers. So if you compare these two, they were very similar to each other. But now when you compare these two, they, their similarities have decreased. Now they are not that similar. Now let us say they also get married. So once they get married, they also give birth to kids. Let us suppose this guy, this couple gives birth to three children. One guy and two girls. And this couple give birth to two sons. So now if you see these two kids, they are very similar to each other. Why? Because both of them they contain the genes of the same parents, right? So they have more similarities. Similarly, when you compare these three people, they are also very much similar to each other. But when you compare this guy and this guy, they are not at all similar. They are completely different. Similarly, when you compare this girl and this guy, they are totally different. So as the relationships become far, the similarities keep on decreasing. So in this case, Two own brothers, they look very similar to each other. When you talk about cousin brothers in this case, they look little less similar because now they are not that closely related. They share the common genes of their grandfather. So what do we see here? The more the similarities, the more close the relationship is. For example here, these two brothers were more similar to each other when compared to the last two brothers that means these two this guy and this guy the similarity between them is very very less when compared to the similarity between them 
That's because they are more closely related. They both share the same parents, whereas they share the same grand grandparents, right? So the more closely people are related, the more common is the characteristics. So this is not only true for human beings, but this is true for all living organisms. And based on this simple fact only, the evolutionary relationships between different living organisms were actually deduced. So let us see what all are we going to study as evidences of evolution. I mean, what were the evidences of evolution? So one evolution, were, one evidence was from morphology and anatomy. What is morphology and anatomy? It is the branch of science which deals with the which deals with the study of structure of living organisms. So the remains of the structure of living organisms was one evidence. Not the remains exactly, the structure, the way the body is designed or the way the body is structured. So that itself is one evidence of evolution. The next is the evidence from fossils. So we will talk about each of these in detail one by one. So let us start with the morphological and anatomical evidences. So let us first try to understand what is morphology and what is anatomy. So morphology is the study of form and structure of organisms and their structural features. Like how is the, for example, in case of human beings. So when we talk about our morphology, that means how is our body organized. So the skeletal of our body will give us, give some idea about how the body is structured. And what is anatomy? It is again the study of body plan of animals. It is basically studied by dissecting the internal organs. So anatomy is nothing but a sub-branch of morphology. Morphology is a wider term when compared to anatomy. So anatomy only talks about specific organs, dissecting those organs, it tries to study the internal structure of that organ, right? So we will see what kind of morphological and anatomical evidences do we have for evolution. First is homologous organs. Again, a new term. So let us see what are they. It was seen that there were certain organs in different living organisms which had a common origin and structure but different functions. That means they originated from the same thing but they performed different functions. I am sure it is not very clear now. Let us take the examples. Take the example of the four limbs of amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Now all of these categories of organisms have got four limbs but the purpose of four limbs in each of them is different so if you look at the four limbs this is the four limb of an amphibian this is the four limb of a reptile this is for a bird and this is for a mammal so if you look at their structure their structure are not very different their structure looks very similar but do you think that amphibians reptiles birds and mammals they look similar to each other there is there no difference between them there is a lot of difference right there is a lot of difference between a human being and uh, a crow and a lizard and a crocodile there is a lot of difference between them right but if you look at their four limbs their structure looks so similar but again these four limbs they do not serve the same function each of them have has a different purpose for example in mammals it is used for movement moving from one place to another for birds these four limbs will actually help them for several purposes they can even fly whereas in case of reptiles and amphibians who live in water like amphibians they stay sometime in water these uh, the reptiles they can crawl up the walls so you see the purpose of the four limbs are different for each of them but their structure and origin are the same. So the presence of these kind of homologous organs gave an evidence that there is some connection between these organisms. So it tells us that an evolutionary relationship exists between different species. Maybe that they originated from the same species. Maybe they originated from a species which had four limbs and gradually that four limbs got changed in different species as per their needs so we can say that there maybe there was a common ancestor. 
So homolo presence of homologous organ was one evidence from morphology and anatomy point of view. Next was the analogous organs. What were analogous organs? They were completely opposite to the homologous organs. They performed similar function but they had different origin and structures. So it is totally opposite of what we saw in homologous organs. So here they will perform the same function but their structure will be totally different. Their origin will also be different. Let us take the example of wings. Birds have wings, insects have wings, bat also has wings and all of them in all of them the purpose of wings is flight right so all of them can fly okay yeah, that is the function of the wing so that means the function of the wing in each of these cases is the same but when you actually look at the structure of a wing they are not at all similar so this is the structure of a wing of a bat so here if you see it has got skin folds stretched between the elongated fingers so here they have got finger like projections Whereas there are no finger like projections in case of a bird or an insect. Now here you can see that the skin folds, the skin is between these fingers. Whereas in case of birds, they have got feathery covering all over the arm. They just have an arm and the arm is covered with feathers. In case of insect again, you have very thin feather like structure. So again, here also you do not see a arm like structure in this case as you see in birds. So structure wise, all three are totally different, but function wise, they all perform the same function. So that also shows something that maybe there are some connection between different organisms. Another example was comparative embryology. What is comparative embryo? Comparative means in comparison to something. And what is embryology? What is embryo? Embryo is the very small form of a living organism. I mean, when reproduction takes place, the first thing that is formed is zygote. Then zygote after repeated divisions forms an embryo. So the study of that embryo is embryology. Now, it was seen that all animals go through similar stages of early development of fetus. That means like how in case of, in our previous lesson, when we were talking about the sexual reproduction in human beings, we talked about the different stages of development, right? How the zygote will group together, they will form the blastocyst, then it will form embryo, then it will form the fetus, and then gradually it will be born as a baby. So it seems not only human beings, but all animals go through similar stages. In fact, if we look at the structure of development of the embryo, you will be really surprised to see that they look so similar. So if you look at the first stage, see these are for different organisms, the first column, each column is for one organism. So the first column is for a fish, the second one is for a salamander, third one is for a turtle, this is for a chick, this is for a pig, this one's cow, this is rabbit and finally this is human. You see, you know, if you think of all these animals, do you think they look similar to each other? No way, right? They are so very different from each other. But if you look at their embryo, at the first stage, just have a look. They all look so similar. You cannot identify which is a human embryo and which is a turtle embryo. They all look so very similar. In the next stage, gradually some differences start appearing. In, the, in further stages, again, some more differences start appearing. But still, there are a lot of similarities. If you look at this embryo of rabbit and this embryo of human beings, they are even at this stage, they are quite similar, right? So looking at this comparative study of the embryos, it can be said that there is definitely a relationship between the different animals, right? So these were some of the evidences which were obtained from morphological and anatomical point of view. So, which acted as a strong evidence for evolution. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.